Hey lads, many of you requested some tips for the raid healing with Restoration Shaman in 10.1. So in this guide I'm going to go through the main skills and talents that you want to be using in the Aberus, the Shadowed Crucible. I'm going to talk about builds and talents at the end, now let's go through the main skills that you're going to be using. And at number 1, the first spot of course is Riptide. This happens to be one of the most mana efficient spells in the game, but the more important part is that it synergizes with so many other spells and talents that we have, including our new 4 piece tier set bonus. So basically in raid your main goal is to always use the riptides, always keep them on cooldown and spread them to as many people as possible. The reason for that are several talents and keep in mind that the luge and undercurrent for example have 2 points into them. But the values that you see on the 2 tips on the screen right now are just for 1 point. So undercurrent is going to increase your healing by 1% for each riptide that you have active on an ally. So let's say you have 5 Riptides rolling, you heal for 5% more, it's easy as that. Every time you cast a Riptide you get 2 stacks of Tidal Waves which basically reduces the cast time of your Chain Heal which we're going to talk about in just a second. And it will also increase the healing of your next Chain Heal as long as you cast it in somebody with a Riptide or in somebody standing in your healing rain. Speaking of that, healing rain is your next iconic spell that you need to be basically casting on cooldown. It basically heals 6 of your teammates in a big circle with a heal overtime effect and it also synergizes with other talents and spells that we have. And it's worth mentioning that the Aberus rate is actually quite friendly for the spell because most of the time the rate is stacked. Obviously if everybody is spread and you're not hitting 6 people with your healing rain then this is actually not effective and the spell is not worth casting. Not the case for the current fights though and this also synergizes with our 4 set tier bonus. Every time you cast the healing rain you put a small heal on everybody with a riptide ticking on them and you increase your healing for 6 seconds by a percentage based on the number of riptides that are being spread and ticking currently. That will also buff your next healing wave healing search or chain heal by a percentage again based on the number of riptides that are spread out. So as you can see both healing rain and riptides are not only healing people but they're also buffing your other spells and your healing overall so you want to use them as much as possible. Let's mention two more talents related to healing rain, they're called Acid Rain and Overflowing Shores. Acid Rain is going to do passive damage on the boss while it's sticking and healing your allies and Overflowing Shores gives an instant heal to everybody in your healing rain as soon as you cast it. The instant heal though is not that big so this talent is not a must take, in fact both of these talents are optional. If you're not interested in damage you don't have to take Acid Rain and the talent point from Overflowing Shores could be invested somewhere else as we're going to see later in the talent tree. But at the end of the day you're probably going to want to put at least one point in one of those two talents so that your tree is actually consistent and you get access to the subsequent nodes. The next spell that we must mention is of course Chain Heal. This one is actually pretty slow and it's going to heal only 4 of your friends, doing reduced healing with a jump, but there is a ton of talents that actually buff the spell and make it pretty powerful. Ancestral Reach gives you a flat 8% increase in the healing of the chain heal and makes it jump additional time, healing additional ally. We already mentioned Tide Waves, but there's another talent called Tidebringer, which further reduces the cast time of your chain heal significantly by 50% every 8 seconds and it makes it to jump even further. You have high tide which makes it so every 100,000 mana you spend makes your next 2 chain heals to heal for additional 10% and the healing is not reduced with each jump. We already mentioned the deluge talent which makes it so your chain heal heals for more if you target somebody with a riptide or somebody in your healing rain. So all of this combined makes a pretty pretty powerful spell out of chain heal which basically you want to use to spot heal people after you spread your riptides and you cast your healing rain. Let's mention the other two spells that we see in some of the buffs, healing surge and healing wave are single target healing spells that basically you do not want to use in the raid. Your goal basically is to pump out as much healing as possible and these two spells are just not as effective as everything else that you have in your toolkit, but there are exceptions. If somebody is about to die and they're taking heavy damage you can of course spam healing surges on them which is going to be more effective for that person than instead pumping chain heals. And you would also like to use healing wave along with primordial wave, we're going to talk about that later, or in situations where you're low on mana since this is a very mana efficient spell. There are two more spells that we need to mention to finish your core rotation and the first one is called unleash life. 
This is a small direct heal with a 15 second cooldown, which significantly buffs your next healing spell that you cast. It's a flat 35% increase on Riptide Healing Wave and Healing Surge. It's a 15% increase on Chain Heal plus additional target bounce on that spell. And on Healing Rain, it affects two additional targets. Now, the big question here is, what do you combine it with? And the short TLDR answer is, just use it. As long as you press that button, you're guaranteed to cast another healing spell, so you're going to get additional value from that. Now, optimally, you would probably like to use it with healing rain and hit two additional targets, but you need to make sure that there's at least eight people in your healing rain. If that condition is not true, you're basically wasting the buff from Unleashed Life, so you either aim for everybody to be stacked, including range and melee, or based on your rate composition, you either cast it on the melee or on the range based on whoever has more people in their group. Your other option is to just use it with Chain Heal. It's going to heal for more, it's going to hit additional target, and if your Chain Heal is buffed and let's say you have High Tide Rolling, it's going to heal for a huge additional amount. In that scenario, you definitely want to use that spell first, but keep in mind that in general the Chain Heal combo is much more easier to use, and you'll be wasting less of a buff compared to Healing Rain if you do not optimize those casts. At the end of the day, again, you get value out of the spell as long as you cast it, even if you combine it with a Riptide, so make sure to keep this one on cooldown as well. That brings us to the other spell that you'll be using a lot, and this is the Cloudburst Totem. You drop it down, it absorbs 30% of all the healing that you do during its duration, and then it bursts and heals everybody around you. This is actually very powerful, because as we said earlier, your goal is to pump as much healing as possible to the raid, and there are a few talents that actually enhance the Cloudburst Totem even further. Swirling Currents just increase the healing stream totem healing by 20% if you spend 2 points in that talent. 2 points in Totemic Focus is not only going to increase the radius of your totem, but it's also going to increase the duration by 3 seconds. 2 points in Totemic Surge reduce the cooldown by 6 seconds, and even consuming the Tidal Waves gives you a small cooldown reduction of that totem based on the Water Totem Mastery talent. Combining all of this basically means that you can have Cloud Burst rolling almost all the time, and all of the healing that you do is going to be absorbed partially by it, so you don't want to drop this on cooldown, but if you know that in the fight there is a point where big damage is coming, you can actually drop that totem 15 to 20 seconds in advance. Also keep in mind that it absorbs healing even if it's overhealing. And the other very important note here is that if you press the button second time after you cast the totem, it's going to release all the healing that it absorbed up until this point. That is actually very important because let's say you're building this big cloud burst, then the big damage happens, but there's still 3 or 4 seconds left in the cloud burst. So in a situation like that, you might actually want to manually pop your cloud burst because 3 or 4 seconds will be enough for everybody else to heal the rate to full. And after that, all that your cloud burst is going to do is overhealing. Nevertheless, keep in mind that if you use this spell correctly, you can get absurd amount of healing out, which is not only going to make you look good on the healing meters, but if done correctly and with some precision timing, you can actually save the rate in some very dire situations where they need a healing after a big mechanic. And so far, a lot of information, but your core rotation is actually very, very simple. The only complicated part is timing your cloud burst correctly which basically requires you to know the fight and to know the mechanics of the boss that you're fighting. And other than that is just rip tight, rip tight, rip tight, keep it on cooldown, use the healing rain also on cooldown, and then combine your unleashed life with a chain heal to spot heal people when they need some help. If you do that, you're basically getting the benefits of all the talents that we mentioned and all the synergies that exist there for Restoration Shaman. You get increased value from all of your healing by combining every talent that we mentioned so far, and your chain heals are going to be extremely fast based on the Tidebringer and the Tidal Waves talent. So far so good, on top of this rotation, you actually have a whole bunch of small and big cooldowns that you can use, so let's go through that list very quickly as well. Earth Shield itself doesn't have a cooldown, but it's a spell that you can use all the time on yourself and on your tanks. Just by itself, it doesn't sound very appealing, but there's actually a few talents that you can take to enhance that spell as well. Two points in Earth and Harmony is not only going to increase the healing of the Earth Shield, but it's also going to give you a damage reduction by 6%, and this is actually huge. Surging Shields further increases the healing of Earth Shield, and there's also another talent called Elemental Orbit, which actually allows you to cast one Earth Shield on yourself and one Earth Shield on somebody else. 
So basically the TODR of this talent is keep one earth shoot on yourself and one earth shoot on the tanks at all times. It is not only going to do a significant amount of healing once you get damage, but it is also giving you DR decreased reduced damage taken by 6% for basically the whole fight. Elemental Orbit also allows you to keep the Water Shield on yourself which mixed with the Resurgent Talents is going to restore a lot of mana for you when you land direct critical hits which is a nice bonus overall. Next on the list is Primordial Wave which is just a 45 second cooldown. After you cast it you basically spread additional Riptide to a target and if you follow it up with a Healing Wave it's going to cleave all the targets that have Riptide on them for 60% of the original value. It's a small cooldown that you should use as often as possible because it's not going to be something that is assigned by the raid but it will also help you overall by spreading more riptides even if you don't follow with a healing wave which is not advised. There are two more spells in your toolkit that you should use on your own laser and those are Ancestral Guidance and Nature Swiftness. AG is a 2 minute cooldown which basically duplicates 25% of your healing into nearby injured targets. And then you have Nature Swiftness which reduces the cast time and makes instant let's say your chain heal but it also reduces the mana cost to zero. So I would actually suggest to keep this one on cooldown especially if you have a longer fight because you get two benefits from that increased HPS and of course reduced mana cost. We also have to mention one of the MVPs in your toolkit the EWT or the Earthen Wall Totem. This is a 1 minute cooldown and when dropped it basically absorbs a small amount of each attack to all the people who are currently standing inside of the totem. And although that might not sound very appealing to you, the total absorbed amount is actually equal to your health. You also have two other talents that enhance this, they're called Totemic Recall and Call of the Elements. Totemic Recall basically resets the cooldown of your most recently used totem as long as it's not a 3 minute cooldown totem. And Co of the Elements lets you do that every 2 minutes. You always, always, always want to combine the Totemic Recall with Earthen Wall Totem, so you drop the EWT and then you press the Totemic Recall. That means that you can drop another EWT right after the first one, and because you have, let's say, half a million health right now, with just 2 button presses, you can actually get out a million out of healing value. You can then drop another EWT one minute later and by the time this cooldown is over you get the totemic call back. So in other words that means that every two minutes you get to drop three earthen wall totems which at the end of the fight if you look into the healing meters is going to be a huge part of your total healing done. At the same time the investment on your side is pretty low because you just drop the totem on the top of the raid and you forget about it. So to summarize that part, keep Earth Shield always on yourself and one of the tanks. If you don't have a good way to track this, check the description of this video, I have a weak aura for that link there. Do not hesitate to use Nature Swiftness and pop Primordial Wave as often as possible. When you know that there is a big mechanic coming, you can always pop Ancestral Guidance and the idea here is also to use it as much as possible because it's just a 2 minute cooldown. So you have a 5 minute boss fight you want to make sure that you're going to be using the spell 3 times during that period. As mentioned before, you also want to make sure that you're dropping 3 Earthen Wall Totems every 2 minutes using the Totemic Recall talent. And last but not least, your big cooldowns which basically save the whole raid. And keep in mind that those spells, if you're playing in an organized group, will probably be assigned to a specific point of the fight. But if you're pugging or you're playing in an unorganized group, make sure to have one of these for every huge mechanic during that boss fight. Of course, number one, SLT. This one does not do a lot of healing, but it does damage reduction, distributes the health of the players and basically makes sure that whatever happens, nobody dies as long as they stay inside of that totem. If you're really greedy and you want to pop up in the healing matters, you can combine this with the healing tight totem. This one is also a 3 minute cooldown and it heals everybody in your party for a small amount every 2 seconds for 10 seconds total. So to make the maximum out of the spell we actually want to cast it when there's a mechanic that hits everybody in the raid and everybody is taking ticking damage. So that this totem doesn't overheal anyone but actually pumps healing into every single person in the raid. And then of course we have Ascendance which does a huge amount of initial heal to everybody around you and then for 15 seconds 100% of your healing is actually duplicated and distributed to allies around you in the vicinity of 20 yards so make sure you're close to people and not far from them. This is a quite powerful button because it basically increases your healing by more than 200% considering that initial immediate heal so make sure that you use that wisely because it also comes at the cost of a 3 minute cooldown. 
Let's also mention here Mana Tide Totem, which brings mana back to all of your allies. And you can actually turn it into a small healing cooldown if you pick the Spirits Walker Tidal Totem Talent, which basically reduced even further the cast time of the Chain Heals. However, I would recommend to be careful picking up this talent because your Chain Heal is extremely fast already due to all the other talents that you already have. So basically, you might be in a situation when your Chain Heal is faster than your global cooldown. So just keep in mind that if you're playing this talent, it might be a little bit of an overkill. Alright, and at the end, let's talk a little bit about the talent. So this is the talent tree that I'm going to link in the description of this video below. You can have a look in there and I'll show you some things that you can actually change and talk about a couple of talents that I haven't mentioned so far. So first, on the left hand side, you can take either Gust of Wind or Spirit Walk, depending on the fight. One is giving you a movement speed for 8 seconds, the other one is basically just a burst of uh, jump forward, uh, which can let you get out of a tough uh, situation. On the right hand side, as you can see right now, I have the Overflowing Shores and the Acid Rain all at the same time. And down here, I have Deeply Rooted Elements. Let me talk a little bit about the DRE or the Deeply Rooted Elements. This one gives you a chance to proc Ascendance for 6 seconds every time you cast a Riptide. And this chance is basically accumulating. So if you keep casting Riptides, the chance keeps growing and growing until you actually get a proc. Now, this is very powerful because you're basically getting half an Ascendance for free. The initial heal is still big and can still uh, save a lot of people, but it has an RNG attached to it. You don't know when it's going to pop, and uh, if it pops when everybody is on full health and you're just spreading your Riptides, then it's not that beneficial. However, the harder the content is, especially on mythic fights where there's consistent damage and people are basically injured all the time, this can bring you a lot of value because every time it pops, you start doing 200 and something uh, percent increased healing, which is going to uh, do a significant difference in your HPS. So a lot of people are running this, but if you're running some low content, uh, let's say LFR or normal, and you know that there's a fight where people are not going to be taking more damage, damage you can actually pick a point from here and put it somewhere else. Now, uh, one of the things that you can do uh, is you can drop one of those two points, right? You can drop either, either Overflowing Shores or Acid Rain and invest it somewhere else. So, for example, I can take the uh, this one and put it into the uh, Spirits Walker Tidal Totem, right? Uh, this way, I don't get that small initial heal, but I get an extra cooldown running from my mana tide. If you're not interested into damage, you can do the opposite. You can drop the Acid Rain and then invest it uh, over here. Uh, now, this basically screwed up all of my other talents uh, you can also take downpour in some situations this one is not that powerful though because the more people you heal the longer the cooldown is so uh, i wouldn't recommend it uh, in general i also didn't mention the earth living weapon talent on the right hand side this is just a weapon imbue which you will put hot on people that you heal and in general it's a little bit better than the runes that you can use on your weapon instead which give you stats Speaking of stats, let's mention those as well. You obviously want to have as higher item level as possible, and then the main stat you want to stack is crit. Obviously, it makes you heal for more, and it has a pretty good synergy with the Resurgence talent that we showed earlier. It makes you get mana back every time you land a direct critical strike hit. After that, you can focus on Verse and Mastery both, have some value in the rate. Mastery makes you heal for more based on the missing health of people. So if you are in a fight where people are consistently injured, Mastery is going to provide you with a lot of additional HPS. That stat though loses value once people are not missing that much health and then versatility actually kicks in because that gives you a flat HPS increase and it also gives you some damage reduction. I wouldn't recommend stacking haste in the rate at all because your chain heals as mentioned several times already are pretty pretty fast so the only thing that you can speed up is the cast of your healing rain which is once every 10 seconds so I wouldn't worry about that stat at all if I'm just raiding. So that's pretty much it for this raiding guide on Restoration Shaman. Make sure to check the description of this video because in there I have linked some weak auras that can help you track healing rain, earth shields, etc. And you can also join the Discord there which has everything that you see on the UI listed along with some other useful information and some very helpful people. Hopefully that guy was helpful to you. Let me know if I missed something or you have a different opinion on some of the spells and the usages that I mentioned. Good luck in your raids. And may you spend so much time in a sentence form that you actually don't have to press the button itself due to the procs.